So this will just get the basics. I learned one thing though about doing demonstrations. I should have been born with my arms just a little longer to reach over. <laughs> but, well, I'm always afraid that the whole thing is going to. I do it. I'm the paranoid at home too that everything's going to fall all over the world. So what I'll do sometimes is um, I'll start changing it up, you know, because I'm looking to do the, basically the most important things or the things that I want accented first. Now if I have paint on my uh, shirt or that, I, I didn't do that, somebody else put that on. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it is. Because <laughs> otherwise I'm in trouble. Something happened over there. Yeah, something happened and it wasn't my fault. I say that a lot around the house. <laughs> yes. Well, I haven't seen too many. I heard, I remember this one artist. He used to talk about that all the time. It was a happy accident, and I've had that. I've been 43 years. I had a lot of accidents with my artwork. Not too many of them were happy. <laughs> one guy spilled coffee on it once. I just finished the job. It was a magazine cover. I said, oh, but I I was able to get it because it was gouache. I was able to wash it off. Mm -hmm. Because the gouache, because it's thicker, lays on the surface. You know, the, the paint, it's, the pigment is more on the surface. Because of that, you can take most of it off. All you have to do is run it under the water and keep shaking it, and it, almost all of it will come off. You can't do that with a watercolor, though. But with this, you can. You go to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have experience with that? <laughs> well, that happened to me. So you're working on an illustration board? Yes, this is an illustration board. And uh, it's, it's a good surface. I, I let my uh, students use it many times. I'll tell them, try it. Now, many of them don't like it, you know, I mean, if you're in a watercolor class and you're taking watercolor, you don't want to use an illustration board, you want to go on a watercolor paper. But what it does is, by using the illustration board, and I make them do that, I mean, I don't, Karen will tell you, I don't force them, <laughs> but um, I do recommend it, and the reason is, if you are working on it and it's you do it and it's so bad you can't stand it by the time you get back to the watercolor paper you're like back home and it's better see it makes you better so that's why i always say try it you'll have fun but it's wonderful because it doesn't wrinkle yes that's another plus that's why i like hot press Except that particular one, I put that on a wrinkle. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the tributaries of that particular painting. And right off of um, West Street, in West Street, if you know where that is, that's right down from where I live. And so that's the the old creek, or creek, or creek, as they say, <laughs> by my house. They say, you don't say that around here. That is a creek. Because I, I can't get, what do they say? Uh, you, if somebody's in the army, you can't take the military out of them. You can take the guy out of the military. You can't take the military. Well, it's the same way with the city. You, you can take them out of the city, but you can't take the city out of them. Mm -hmm. so, so that's me. Mm, that's cool.
quite a change going from York to West Coast. Yes. <laughs> We're doing a book. <laughs> if you read that article about that, that change. But I've been coming here since I was a kid. So I don't know if that's fair, but I've been here lots. The one who really deserves a medal is my wife because when we bought the house here, she never even heard of the place. And and I dragged her all the way down here. So. Kicking and screaming. Kicking and screaming. <laughs> she was born in Port Chester, New York. So I took her away from the city. <laughs> down to Green Hill. No, no. Not where I live. But they, they do get funny about some of the things they have because the one, um, one uh, lady had an article in a paper when I first got here. And it was about her house being the oldest house in Ocean County. And another lady took the article and marched down to her house and says, what's the meaning of this? Mine's the oldest. And she was right. Uh, that was Mrs. Lovelin, if anybody remembers Mrs. Lovelin. She was right, her house was built in 1730, so oh. hers was the old one. And like Paul said, I was born in a log cabin. Well, it wasn't a log cabin, it was close. Uh, that house is still standing, and it's, it was built in 16, I forget what, 1620s. So it was before they had the city. That house was built. And my dad was fighting with it from the day we, he bought it. <laughs> he fought that house, right? A good fight. He was old. So it had a right to fight back. So now we have a little of this. Now I'm going to get off of this for a couple of minutes. What's happening in that corner? I'm not sure. Is that a bale of hay or something? Here? Yeah. There's like a little stone wall and some grass growing there. But we'll come to that. But now I've been waiting for this edge to dry. Now that it's dry, I get my tape and I start taping again. Remember when they used to put the signs on the barn? Mm -hmm. They used to ask the guys, can I advertise? Yeah, mail mail pouch, pouch tobacco. tobacco. So I just put pouch tobacco. Though. But it's close enough. So we're going to do a little sty here. Okay, so let's get a little sky. Now I'll use the round for that. Some like to use the flat, and that's a good brush for a sky too. But uh, sometimes a round might have a, a better feeling. So let's get a little sky. We'll kind of change up here. Let me put a little of this. I know I have some there, but I don't want to get the red in, it, in the sky. But let's get some of this in. Let's get a little sky going. Did you say you need more plates? I'll look at yard sales for you. Yeah, go ahead, because I go right through them. Okay, so here we go. Let's do a little sky. So we'll go back into the umbers. I'm, I'm trying not to use too many colors. Now, we're not making watercolors, so we don't have to worry about getting it too... So we'll get some brown in there. And I'll stick a tad of blue in there. Get a little bit of a gray. Yeah. You're saying he's going to do a sky? I don't know. What kind of sky is that? That's a sky. A sky is a sky. It's a sky. So. Now, to, to make it more opaque, uh, you can put the designer's gouache or the temper in it to lighten it up a bit. Let's lighten it just a tad. Okay, so we'll get a little bit lighter. Let's get a little lighter. 
And we'll get a little lighter. And we'll get too light. Put some light down there. And if you notice, you roll the brush. I roll the brush. Well, that's what I do. It was, I, I've been doing it for so long that it's automatic. I just can't help it sometimes. What do they say? You're doing it too long. No. Now, my son says, go ahead, keep going, he said, because... You'll have plenty of time to rest, so just mm. keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so I do that. <laughs> I always say something about him because he's, he's a musician and he mentions me sometimes and my wife in his shows, so I mention him. Have you ever done any paintings of his band or his group? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. He wants me to do a a picture of his guitar, but he wants it so he can put it on his arm as a tattoo. Mm -hmm. I, I keep resisting that. <laughs> I'm not doing it. So you want a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Some of it came off. And guess what? Boy, that looks nice. There's a happy accident. <laughs> Did you see it happen? It's an old, junky, whatever. Something happened. So, but we got to keep that edge. So we gotta, we're creeping around the edge of that building, so we have to keep that edge. So we'll do some. I should wait for it to dry. I know. I'm, I'm impatient, though. Make the grass now. Yeah. All right. I will. I, and that's another thing. I usually, when I'm working on the, um, a painting like this, uh, I will mix most of my own greens. Everybody knows that I do that. But let me put some kind of a nice green in there. Where's that tree brush? Everybody knows this brush. This is my tree brush. I had it for lots of years. It took a long time to make it. So let's put in some background. And then we'll come down to the to the grass. So I'll put a little blue. And what else do we mix with blue? Yellow. Yeah, yellow. See, we all know that. And what are some of the other yellows besides this kind? Mm -hmm. Yellow. Oh, yeah. That, that'll make kind of a green. And believe it or not, there's some brown in the grass. Mm -hmm. Even though it's nuts, even right in the summer, it's alive, it still has brown in it. If you look real close. And that's my problem, I've looked too close for too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, let's make something. Ooh. Let's make a little bit of, of a background. Well, it. It's going to be in the background, so I want to make it a little bit kind of a bluish look to it. No good. No good. I don't like that. All right. So, there's got to be another color to mix it with. I guess I, sometimes I get fussy with it. But that's me. So don't mind me while I get a little fussy on here. <laughs> but that's how I get. It'll come. It'll come eventually. And then we get some of the again the opaque. Want to have the opaque? Was that the Chinese white? 
No, actually, it's the gouache white. Oh. Yeah. Which I don't know if if that's politically correct, uh, but uh, it's that's what it is. That's the one I use. That one. That looks a little green. By the way, I have I'm colorblind with green. <coughs> yeah. yeah so. Does it look green? No. Does that have a little green in it? Doesn't look green. <laughs> it's like well, it probably is blue. That's what I think is green. So then, who has a slip of paper? Is there a slip of paper laying around? This is real important. This refresh me. No, it's it's not. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So get over here. And we'll start putting in some of these trees in the background. That's what we want to do. So that's blue, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. What do you like that? <laughs> All these years I thought it was green. Green in the distance. From a distance? Mm -hmm. no, green well, in a distance. Oh, I see. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. Green in the distance. Smoggy, right? That's mm -hmm. actually it. I don't want it to get it too watercolor. But that's the one of the beauty parts about this paint. You can get it to be almost like watercolor. You know, you can. Some people do it, and it really is successful. See, then we'll start getting darker. We'll get some. And Paul, any minute's going to say to me, Tom, it's almost over. Don't say that, Paul. You're a great guy, but don't say that. Yes, yeah, the colors that you put in or that you mix, that's what will make your work. Get those colors. Because you're... you're creating this world. This is your world, see? And you're making it. You're the you're the maker, as it were. And that's when you find out the one who made everything is probably pretty great. Because just trying to set up your own little thing here. So then sometimes I'll come along and I'll make that kind of disappear a little bit back there. Just a little bit. And sometimes I'll use my hands. Charlie told me that. Charlie Waterhouse. He was the guy that taught me how to paint. Yeah, he was a great guy and a close friend. He will be missed. He invited me right from the start, right from school, right in the beginning. I, I was just learning stuff. And he invited me right from the school, right to his house. Come and see me. Come come down to my house. I'll show you how to you? paint. Huh? He felt sorry for you? I guess, because I had holes in my shoes. We used, to, we used to joke when I was a kid, me and my brother. We used We could tell... We didn't like people that smoked. Now, I know there might be some here that smoke, but we didn't like them because our shoe in the front on the sole used to come off because uh, the nails would fall out or wear out or whatever. So the shoe was open in the front on the sole. So when you walk, you're trying to walk and you got this flap, right, in the front. So anybody that smoked, you picked up his butt and it was still... That hurt. <laughs> so we, we, and that's a true story. Well, for years we laughed at me and my brother. I thought you were going to say you saved them and resold them. <laughs> oh, that's what happened. So we didn't like anybody that smoked. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I hit a smoker. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you? Yeah, I was smoking. My foot has got third degree burns. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that was part of growing up. 
That's the first thing I thought of when my brother passed was how we used to do all that. First thing I thought of. <laughs> How in the world did you find West Creek? Well, it, the, actually the family, uh, they're big uh, into hunting and fishing and all of that. Okay. And um, they were the ones we fished and hunted. We're French Canadian and my father and the family. And I was born in Newark, but, uh, and they, um, from up in Canada, from Newfoundland, that's where we came from, and they were fishermen and hunters and all that, because you needed it to survive back then, and so that's what they did here. I just don't like the shape of that. Let me cheese a little bit. Give it some interest. And then, so because they were fishermen, and this was a place, that my family, when, uh, when I was a kid, they called this area of God's country. That's what they called it. This area was called God country, God's country to them. That's what I knew it as when I was a kid. This was God's country. And that's what we said. That was, it was always said in a very reverent way by my father. We're not necessarily religious people, and I'm not that religious of a person myself, but that's what he said. It's God's country. Let me get a little depth. And then... We'll kind of change it up. And we'll kind of get a little minty there. If we can. Let's get back into these flats. Like I said, sometimes I'll use a flat. 